fairly sociable, getting out there, doing lots of things. Um, totally wasn't expecting anything to happen to my health. Yeah, really stressful time actually. And I was in a new a new role, um, and that's it. All actually came together. It was in a September, so the busiest month um, when I started noticing the yeah the first few symptoms. And it had been such a busy time, really busy day. And I was sitting back in the office having sort of a bit of a debrief, and I was just rubbing my hand on my trousers, and I thought, oh, God, something it's a bit strange. I just couldn't really feel like my fingers, and I didn't really think much of it. Again, it was like seeing if I'd had a stroke. I think that was what they were what nervous about, maybe. I mean, I had a bit of a cry first, don't get me wrong. I went to the toilet, looked and saw myself in the mirror, and I thought, is this, is this my bad news? You know, I thought, is this, is this it? This is something really bad, isn't it? Jenna Cox, welcome to the MS Mindset. How are you? Hi, really well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Very, very welcome. Uh, we managed to sort of uh, get together quite last minute in the end, so I appreciate you giving up some <laughs> yeah. time and almost bringing it on you. But uh, yeah, it's nice that you can um, we can have a chat and get together. I've been uh, a follower and admirer of your uh, your Instagram page for a while now, and you've been um, sort of promoting a lot of sort of uh, yeah healthy diet and, and lifestyle choices and things like that. Um, as it you know, as you've kind of figured all those sorts of things out along your own journey with MS, is that is that sort of fair to say? Yeah, that's right. I'm a complete nutrition geek. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially now I'm I'm a nutritional therapist and everything. All things nutrition, I lap up. I yeah, find it really fascinating. So yeah, trying to spread the word um, yeah. through my through my programs. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I think that's really worthwhile. And um, yeah, if you're going to be a geek about anything, then nutrition and health well-being uh, to help with with critical illnesses and things like that is is certainly certainly worthwhile so what were you doing sort of before your life I mean obviously you you have MS yourself correct is that, yeah. I do yeah yeah and which which um which one have you been branded with as such <laughs> I'm in the relapsing remitting team yeah uh, yeah been in been in that team since 2016 now 2016. so yeah wow, okay. seven seven years in yeah it's yeah. Uh, yeah it's a long journey ahead isn't it but certainly um Time, time can fly. So what was your life like pre-diagnosis and what were you doing and, you know, career wise or, or were you working? Things yeah. Like that? Um, I was, well, I was, I had my first relapses when I was 32. Um, and I had previously in my twenties, I had been living it up in Spain. Um, nice. I'd spent a good chunk of, of time in Spain, um, having a really great time hedonistic ways maybe partying a lot going out a lot enjoying <laughs> living, every food living la vida time. loca well exactly and it was it was honestly it was like the best time ever um didn't really think too much about my health I mean I was I was fairly healthy you know I had a fairly healthy diet I exercised quite a lot um but it was yeah I didn't really sort of look after myself that well um I think you just sort of feel a bit invincible when you're in your 20s like nothing's gonna happen yeah. to you yeah. um that would seem for like other people, older people, yeah. but not me. Cross, cross that bridge when you come to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I came back to the UK when I was 10, 30 um, and sort of moved around a bit and sort of settled in, ended up settling in Bristol. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, world. yeah, no, it's great. I love it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I was, I, I was working in higher education, um, fairly active, fairly sociable, getting out there, doing lots of things. Um, totally wasn't expecting anything to happen to my health that oh. was quite quite the surprise really um yeah, yeah so when everything started happening it was a big change I can yeah I can I can imagine and certainly certainly uh, sympathize with, with with that so were you were you teaching in in higher education in Spain as well and then moved over or is it something you kind of wanted to do and eventually came yeah what what were you doing in Spain apart from partying then? What were you? <laughs> yeah yeah I, w I was working I was a fully formed adult um yeah. I was teaching English <laughs> uh teaching English as a foreign language um I had been previously teaching in Australia and then I had oh, a wow. master plan of learning Spanish um it'd been my plan for years and I was only going to go out there for a couple of years but I enjoyed it so much that I went traveling for a bit and then came back and I thought no Spain's my home now I want to stay there yeah. um so yeah stayed for like a couple of years yeah yeah really 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 did but then I thought no get more sensible start thinking future you know get a mortgage yeah. um sort of back in the UK where the family is and things so uh, yeah I, I moved into higher education at university um not teaching but I was working in student services working with students yeah. trying to keep them on the you know straight and narrow yeah. um, <laughs> perhaps learning yeah. from your experience of uh yeah partying in Spain you need to, need to knuckle yeah, down yeah, now 
I yeah. always got my work in on time. Always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, you were home then for a couple of years. You based yourself in Bristol. Yeah. Kind of thinking, right, I'm getting my, my life in order now. This was always the, the plan. I've, I've done what I've done. It's been great. And then uh, I want to, uh, yeah, settle down now and, and be, be a, gr- a fully fledged grown up. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great exactly. Put my adult, adult hat on. Yeah. Um, not nearly as fun, I have to say, but, um, no. <laughs> they, you know, it's, it's brought wonderful things in different ways. But yeah, yeah trying to embrace the, the granny inside me now. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so when did you notice then, obviously, when you, you came back to the UK, you were, I imagine, quite a stressful time trying to get everything organized, find somewhere to live, find a job. Yeah. And, and I have noticed, I think, in, with, with a few people I've spoken to, that stress does seem to be hovering around during the times of, of, uh, of these symptoms. But what did you start to notice then? What kind of led you down this path? I, I I totally agree with the whole stress thing. Um, and I've said that to all of my neurologists that I've had. Um, I I had a couple of uh, jobs when I first got back. Um, and the summers in particular working in education can be really quite, if you're not teaching, then it can yeah. really be quite stressful because you're, you're dealing with the students going out, you're dealing with the students coming in. Um, yeah, really stressful time, actually. You know, I was in a new, a new role. Um, and that's, it all actually came together. It was in a September, so the busiest month um, when I started noticing the, yeah, the first few symptoms, really. What were those sort of symptoms that first started to surface then? What did you pick up on first? Yeah, um, it was, a, I remember it so well. It was after a PGCE registration event. I was working in registration and enrollment events and things. And it had been such a busy time, really busy day. And I was sitting back in the office having sort of a bit of a debrief and I was yeah. just rubbing my hand on my trousers. And I thought, oh God, something that's a bit strange. I just couldn't really feel like my fingers. Yeah. And I didn't really think much of it. I just, yeah, I didn't really think much. Numbness, um, maybe it was cold or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, you, you have weird sensations in your body the last couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it just went from there, really. It, it went to pins and needles and it started with a numb hand. Then it started going a bit further on my arm. And um, I think when lots of people start, you just think, oh, maybe I've trapped a nerve. I mean, that's the first thing a lot of people go to, isn't it? Like, yeah, must be a trapped nerve. Um, I did I did speak to the GP at the time. And they also thought it was a trapped nerve and just said, you know, come back if um, it was on the phone at the time. Yeah. And yeah, they keep said, come back it. if, um, yeah, keep an eye on it. Yeah. And I, I do remember I was bumping into things a bit more than I normally do. Right. Um, Some balance but issues it was there, that, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't really think much of that either. Um, and then it was a, that part, I can't remember how long it went on for. It was a couple of weeks. And I listened to your, your um, another podcast, the other podcast you did with Jay. It was Jay, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she said that she went to an osteopath um, right. because she thought it was a trap nerve. And I was like, same, yeah. did that whole thing as well. They said, <laughs> yep, yeah, that'll be that'll be sorted within in two weeks. You'll be fine. You'll be right as rain. And uh, it didn't. And then I was due to go home to see a, one of my closest friends, um, she was over from uh, New Zealand at the time. So I was going to go back to my parents anyway. And then that morning that I woke up, it was a Friday. Um, and I woke up, numb face, numb leg. We have, you know, the symptoms I'm sure that a lot of a lot of us have. But it was on one side of my body. So that was the, yeah, that was the sort of scary, the scary bit. Um, and I called 111 actually. I tried to get a GP appointment first, but they said, they were prioritizing babies and, and older people that day. And I thought, okay. I think these symptoms probably do warrant a GP appointment. Yeah, yeah um, I'm not looking for a sick note to stay off work. Yeah, like something is wrong exactly. With me. Something's wrong. I think when you go numb on one half of your body, I think you you yeah. know you get to the top of the, the, the queue there. Um, called 111. And obviously one of the answers that I gave must have, you know, triggered something on their list of, of serious things. So they sent an ambulance out. Um wow. Yeah, they were pretty sure because they they were pretty sure that it wasn't a stroke. They did all the all the sort yeah. of standard tests there, um, and just said, okay, well, you do need to speak to your GP. Um, I got had an appointment that afternoon, and they referred me to the mini stroke. They thought it was maybe mini strokes, right. um, so they referred me over to to get an MRI. But they said if anything happens to your vision, go straight to A and E. So I got on a train later than I thought that day back to back to where my parents were in Hertfordshire, and then at the train station. That was when I was looking at the the um the times for the next trains yeah and there was a couple of people and it was in the, that was the first time I looked in like to the distance the whole day yeah. because you know I'd been in my in my flat um yeah. your mind was elsewhere was, as well it's not something you well, might have picked up on yeah yeah and I wasn't really thinking like 
you know, I wasn't doing like sort of eye tests and things. Um, and that was when I started to notice there was a bit of of double vision. Um, wow. But I was on a train for like the next three hours anyway to get back to my parents. So there's not much I could do. Yeah. And then by the time I got back, that I, I didn't, I couldn't see that anymore. And I just thought, I'm hatching it. I didn't, I don't really know. Yeah. But off to Rainy, we went the next morning when it when it had come, yeah, a bit more. Wow. What was the experience like in A and E? Then were you sort of referred straight down the neurology route, or were you in there for a while? What what, what kind of happened there? Um, it was brilliant, actually. I, I they saw me straight away. Um, again, it was like seeing if I'd had a stroke. I think that was yeah. what they were, were nervous about. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think I had. I mean, it was seven years ago now, and it was all it was all so fast, a bit of a blur. Yeah. But um, I think I had a. Did I have a CT scan that day? And it was. They didn't see anything on the CT scan. Um, yeah. and then I was. I was on the ward, um, but then, you know, they came around and they said, well, we can't help you really tonight. So I can't really remember what the service is. You remain an inpatient, but you go home. So you remain in yeah. the system, but you have to get to go home yeah. that night. So I went home that night and got an MRI the next day. Um, and then it was the next day after that. It was, it was daily daily visits, I think, to the hospital for, for a couple of weeks. And that was when they had to look at the scans and they said, they're abnormal. Um, I was with my dad. Um, abnormal and then they gave a list of about I think it was five things that you don't really want to hear a, no. a doctor say when they're looking at your scans on the screen <laughs> um you know I think it was it could be brain tumors it could be meningitis um clots MS I think there was another one but I was waiting for like that or yeah, yeah. Or, Ronnie knows that's got a bit blocked yeah <laughs> exactly or you're just a bit run down yeah um but no it wasn't so but yeah I think that that moment was really like a I really felt like wow, this is my bad news moment. Um, and the one, that, the one that obviously sort of struck me was brain tumors, you know, because yeah, I could see the scan and I thought, if they're brain tumors, well, I'm a goner because they're everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was actually a bit of a relief when a few days later they said it's more likely to be MS. Yeah. I've, I've noticed, yeah. Uh, again, we're speaking to, to a couple of people, it's, it can come as a bit of a relief or um uh, yeah i think because you're often give, presented with a list of things it, it, it could be and, and it's not yeah like you said yeah. it doesn't make great reading does it and i also think because ms is sort of not as there's not as much awareness of it we don't know as much of it we think oh, okay well that's not cancer it's not a stroke they sound awful ms okay, maybe that's something I can, I can deal with. Now we know what it is. Let's, let's go. And yeah, it can be a, a sort of a, a, a very different reaction depending on, on your awareness of what MS is, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't really have that much awareness of, of what it was. I had a vague, oh, MS, you know, disabilities walking with a stick. Yeah. Type idea. But I was, you know, yeah, my family and friends are fortunate enough never to have experienced it. And I didn't really yeah. know what it involved. Um, I think my mum did because at the time Susan Kennedy from In Neighbours oh, right. had MS. Yeah, and I think the character or the was, actress, uh, the uh, the character. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wasn't watching Neighbours then, but my no. mum was still watching it, and um, yeah, I think it was yeah sort of later that week. She just she did say, oh, I thought it might be MS because Susan Kennedy <laughs> on Neighbours, she had some similar symptoms to you. Um, yeah. yeah. And she's and she said, "Oh, she's doing really well." So I was like, "Oh, if Susan Kennedy's <laughs> doing really well, then fingers crossed." Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Similar path. Let's, let's hope the script uh, script writers keep it uh, that she's yeah. That she does like, even no, better. I'm the script writers, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it is. Um, it, it can be so frustrating. I think particularly now that obviously we we both will know a lot more about MS. We, it's easy to recognise then that there is so little awareness. There's no you know, stand up to cancer night or MS, you know, there's, there's lots of, of great charities trying to, to do more, more and more, but the, unless it directly affects your life, I don't think the awareness is there. And, and you know, for, for people who in your life to understand you, but also from a diagnosis point of view, and, and even some neurologists don't know a huge amount, depending on what specialized, you know, what their specialist subject, uh, as it were, is. Um, so yeah, it can be, can be quite daunting, can't it? Yeah, and contradictory information that you might get from one mm -hmm. neurologist to another neurologist, or yeah. you know, they might have different some different ideas between themselves about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, it's it's the I think it's the leading cause of disability in the UK. You know, it's mm. 
it's this is you know and it, and it yeah. strikes people you know i think it's that in the 30s 30s maybe 30s yeah. is, is the most common age um yeah, yes. yeah so it's yeah it's surprising that we didn't we, i didn't know more about it mm-hmm. um yeah yeah but you're doing, you're doing a good job getting the word out there. <laughs> I mean, I would try. We'll do it together, won't we? That's it. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned again in, in previous episodes, I was um, I was an insurance advisor at the time. I did mortgages and, and critical illness cover and things like that. And, and MS yeah. is a critical illness that you end up having to, it's almost like, oh, I need to make sure I mention these so I'm compliant. But we understand cancer and we understand heart attack, stroke. But even as an advisor, I, I didn't know what it was. I knew the questions yeah. I had to ask. I didn't know why it meant MS. I just knew that was something that was in in the mix. But yeah, it's it's. Um, I, I really can't get my sort of wrap my head around around what that's um, why why it's like that. But what was it like then for you? Obviously, going from A um, and E doctors back to the hospital, MRI. You kind of been given a lot of information there of a lot of things it might be, and then you know mm. at one point you then sent home and then the next minute you say it could be this but we'll do it tomorrow you know get the train home but if you start to lose your vision go to a and e well that's <laughs> should i not be taken to a like what was that whole yeah. experience like how did you how did that make you feel at the time um i was petrified yeah really scared um i think especially from that first one when it was it could be any of these things mm-hmm. that was the the wait from that to then have a few more scans i think i then had a, a full you know a full body ct to see because they'd be like you know you just want to check that if it has if it is cancer that it hasn't spread yeah. so that was like there were <sighs> quite a few yeah there were quite a few um steps before even ms was like the contender that was you know that was probably going to be the winner um yeah. i did lumbar puncture i think it was on the, that same day i had a lumbar puncture i don't know did you have a lumbar puncture the joy no, of the lumbar I've, puncture? I've, I've been lucky enough to uh to escape that so far um i yeah. don't know if they'd ever do it as a as a checkup but i hope yeah i think i yeah. missed, missed the boat on that one which is um, i am yeah. grateful for because i don't hear great things <laughs> i don't know if you want to no. talk through it a little bit more what, what that's like <laughs> I'd, I'd had better days yeah. um to be honest it's not it's not a bad um procedure i mean i'm sure people go through a hell of a lot worse with just injuries and um and other surgeries that they have and things so you know the, i think the overall experience of that wasn't necessarily that bad i think it was the fear at the time of just i wasn't expect i was expecting just to go in and get some test results and go home and yeah. then when it's sort of like could be all of these things and now we're going to go and put a big needle into your spine can you just yeah. go and lie over there for a second it was a bit like oh yeah. i'm not even wearing like i was wearing a dress i think so i've just gone to my parents for a couple of days i was wearing this inappropriate like dress and it was yeah. like hang on a minute if i you not that you can really plan your wardrobe for a lumbar puncture but you know you, you just yeah. get a bit more prepared i don't know it's yeah. probably a, bit of a weird weird thought process um no I, yeah i, I think mean, being bombarded with that information and thinking i'm not I'm, i am not prepared i've not thought about what is happening here you've kind of sprung this on me and I totally sprung me yeah reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the strangest thing. Um and I was, I am a bit squeamish. I'm a lot better now than I used to be, but um I've always been be. quite squeamish. <laughs> so yeah, the the whole needle thing, I was I was glad I hadn't actually had time to read about it in a way. Yeah. Like I didn't know anything about it and mm-hmm. was just yeah, turned to your side and yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really like thinking about it even now. It just gives me a bit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do I do remember it, it must have touched a nerve or something and just me sort of like kicking. Ooh. like you know because they'd obviously yeah. touch something they shouldn't have touched and yeah ooh, oh. yeah not very nice um no. but the weird <clears throat> the weird symptoms i had after that because they take some fluid out and it affects the fluid in your spinal um, cord and, and in your brain <clears throat> i had such bad headaches but only when i was yeah when i was upright really really bad headaches the next like three days or four days and those headaches would only disappear when i lay down it was really strange so, uh, Re- so they'll completely go. It was like yeah. the most weird headache I ever had. So like whenever a, like I was a in switch like, hospital, you had for like on, yeah. Off, yeah, and I was constantly going back to hospital and things over the next few days. So I'd be lying down there in like the waiting rooms, and people come and see if I was all right. And I was like, no, just got. I said I can't really explain. <laughs> got a yeah. headache, lumbar puncture. <laughs> have to lie down. It's magic. <laughs> you need like um, a little card, don't you, to be like I am fine. I have just I'm had fine. a lumbar puncture. <laughs> yeah. Have a long puncture and this weirdly is happening to my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I, again, yeah. I am. I am grateful that I didn't have to uh, to experience that. But yeah, I suppose in them not preparing you for it, you didn't have time to worry too much about it, and you just kind of had to roll with the punches, I guess. 
yeah, get on with it. I mean, I had a bit of a cry first, don't get me wrong. I went to the toilet, yes. looked and saw myself in the mirror and I thought, is this is this my bad news? You know, yeah. I thought, is this, this is it? This is something really bad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, but then sort of just, yeah, to get on with it. So it was the lumbar puncture, was that, that was after the MRI scan, am I right? Or the, yeah, the CT scan yeah. first, then an MRI, then a lumbar puncture. Yeah, then another yeah. CT, I think. And then... And then the neurologist, <clears throat> I think yeah. only at that point I saw a neurologist. Yeah. Um, sorry, pardon me. <clears throat> and at that point, the neurologist said, this is likely to be inflammation. And she was actually really nice about it. She didn't even say in there. She said, I think there's some inflammation in your brain. And the good news is that there's medication that we can take the inflammation down and um, hopefully it won't happen again. Is what she said. And that was actually really calming. It was a really simple way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. We can so, yeah, that board. was... Yeah, or just there's there is medication out there that will hopefully make sure that this doesn't happen again or as often. And I thought, okay, it was, it's it's just inflammation in my brain, and I can yeah. take medication for it. Is how I sort of saw it. Yeah. So, at what point was was MS mentioned? How did that conversation go? So she's talked about inflammation. She's almost given you some reassurances, I guess, that it's something mm-hmm. that can be dealt with. Um. What happened from there then in terms of you actually understanding what it was? The, I think my my MRIs, um, I don't know what was confusing about them, but they sent them to the Royal Free Hospital in London to have another look at them because I think, I don't know why there was not a consensus that it was MS, but okay. it, that, that came back um, and that was when they said, this is likely to be MS. But at that point, I don't know if this happened to you. When Did you have like one episode and they said it might be clinically isolated, a clinical isolated incident? What's it called? Syndrome? I can't remember what the... No, I, th- I don't know whether because I'd started to sort of be a bit of a Google detective at the time because I was working yeah. in the critical illness field. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not from a medical perspective, but I had been researching and I had started to collect a, a few symptoms and and again, it's something I always tend to, tend to bring up is that I am very suspicious of my, my diagnosis of relapse and remitting because I have definitely had relapses. I have had no mm. remittance. I, everything I've collected along the way, I still have now. Um, and I noticed it with, with numbness and, and blurred vision as, as you did um, quite early on and then started to notice that I was, I was quite tired. Um, and at that point, I just really pushed for an MRI. I thought, I want to know what's going on. And I just kept ringing up. Um, I'd been to the GP. They'd ruled out carpal tunnel. Oh, no, sorry. They'd said it's likely to be carpal tunnel. Just keep an eye on it, as, as we're often told, told to do um, in our, our own medical, uh, medical space. But, um, yeah, and I think after pushing for an MRI, because there were multiple lesions, I think that perhaps might be the indicator of it being multiple sclerosis, where obviously there has to be more than one. It's yeah, affecting yeah, yeah. multiple parts of the body. There's more than one lesion. Therefore, it's, it's MS. But... Yeah, I don't know whether or not if it just remains one lesion and some, some numbness, whether or not you get that that diagnosis. I don't know. Yeah, well, I had Actually. to wait for it to. I had a when I came back to Bristol, um, then I got referred to the brain centre here, and yeah. I had another MRI, and that was when <laughs> I know I feel like I've seen all the MRI, MRI machines in in the south in the south of England, um, and that was when they found more lesions right. from the first one. So okay. lots of, lots must have been going on in those couple of months because it was yeah. maybe a couple of months by the time I got referred, um, and that was when they could make the sort of official diagnosis of yeah this is MS now because it's multiple. Right. So it wasn't that your first MRI had missed anything or your next one they hadn't quite spotted something. It was actually there had been progression. There was new activity and more relapse. That was my understanding of it. Yeah, I'd, I'd had a couple more symptoms as well, like clinical presentation of the symptoms. So I think all that paired together. They um they could say this is this is MS. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't help, I guess either that you know we've talked about how stress can be, you know, a, a trigger mm-hmm. or, or certainly um, create a hotbed for things like relapses. That you are just right. We're going to see you for a bit. Here's a load of things to worry about. We'll see you in yeah. a month. Here's some more yeah. things to worry about. Another scan. Prod you with this. Don't Go stress worry yourself. About it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. You just there. You worrying. just go and chill out. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't, I'd be, I'd be really interested to see what the, if they had stats from first going to the doctors with symptom, presenting symptoms to diagnosis, how many, how many people have a sudden flurry of extra symptoms. And actually it's the process of being diagnosed that can yeah. actually cause a lot of these um, additional 
symptoms before yeah. you go down that path. Yeah, because I don't know about you, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm quite good at not maybe jumping to conclusions now, but certainly that very beginning stage, mm-hmm. anything yeah. that would happen, I was like, oh, this is the beginning of the end. Yeah. You know, it was... <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know what that end is that I ever thought would be because I, whatever happens to me, it's not, it's not the end. You know, you're gonna, mm-hmm. you know, I'll keep fighting to keep myself well forever. Um, but it'll be little things like I, I was in the supermarket holding a, my bag, or the uh, the basket, sorry, mm-hmm. um, and my hand when I was putting things on the conveyor belt, my hand had pins and needles in, and it had recovered since when I had right. my my numb limbs, and I thought. Here we go again. Here we go again. And no, by the time I put, put my shopping away, it had gone. And it was just because I was okay. holding the basket, you know? Right. So it was yeah. just those little things you just sort of think, oh, is this is this something yeah. is this the start of a new relapse or something? Yeah. So yeah, that stress I think is um does definitely play a part. Yeah, it's like um, you know, if you're if you're in bed before you know, on a night and you're just scrolling through your phone. Or I find if I've been been on my phone and sat on the toilet a bit too long, my legs start legs start to go a bit tingly. You're like, oh no, no. <laughs> but actually, think no, you just need to get up, <laughs> and move, yeah. or eat more fiber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I try to keep calm, calmer now. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I don't ever have meltdowns when I think there's something is a new um, a new symptom or something. But I do try and think like, yeah doesn't have to just be a mess just because you've got something weird happening yeah. in your body let's you know let's take yeah. a deep breath and be sensible about this yes yeah the body is weird and wonderful and does lots of weird and wonderful things and we can't yeah. be sort of pigeonholed uh, do you ever find yeah. it the other way around though where you there is something the matter and you need to go to the doctors for some antibiotics or you know you, you've you've just feeling really unwell and you think oh it's just a mess i'll leave it whereas actually no it, it it could be something different. You, you find you perhaps more dismissive as well of other things that you think that's probably a mess. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I don't, have I? Gosh, I don't know. If I have, <laughs> it's because I don't realise because I've just dismissed it as, yeah. as a mess. Um, yeah. I don't think so. And I actually think in the last sort of seven years, because I, I, I think it really has been, so I've been taking much better care of myself yeah. through yeah. like diet and stress and although that's still one I I probably struggle with it with the most um just with lifestyle and exercise and everything I actually haven't been that unwell with anything yeah. else that I'm aware of to like confuse the the two yeah. I don't think because um, you've been taking such good care of yourself actually you've not yeah. had anything to potentially misblame or, or, or wrongly accuse yeah. MS of, of causing yeah but, I think there was one there was one um time I had a I had a UTI and I knew it was a UTI and I'd been so stressed for months it was classic beginning of the term at university yeah. it was November so I'd spent a good sort of three months being really stressed immune system had really taken a hit from that yeah. got a UTI um and then the doctors didn't recognize that it was a UTI they did sort of the tests and it just kept coming back and that was frustrating because I knew very well it was a UTI I'd had UTIs before um yeah. and that actually caused a pseudo relapse so Okay. That was something maybe I should have pushed harder for because they didn't give me antibiotics for th- three months. I had a UTI for which was, don't oh, wish God. that on anybody. No. <laughs> um, I hear about other people just getting antibiotics or just just like that for UTI. So they don't yeah. necessarily test, but I couldn't get antibiotics for three months, and that caused a pseudo relapse. Um, so, okay, so yeah. it's not, not a term that I'm I've sort of familiar with. So it's a pseudo relapse. Is that where you? It, presents like one but it's not new activity or, or how, how, how does it how's it classified as a pseudo relapse yeah it is confusing um and i i think maybe the whole of the neurological world even healthcare providers <laughs> i think also find it quite confusing because the explanations that i've been given and even read online um i think are, are slightly odd but yeah your so your body it can be things like infection so if your temperature raises um much like if you go on holiday or something or hot showers I've luckily yeah. never been affected by um, hot weather. I love hot weather. I love yeah. hot showers. Thank goodness that yeah. doesn't affect me. Um, <laughs> but certain temperature raises um, yeah. when you're when you're ill and things. I don't know if that's happened to you. Right. Um, but that can bring on um, some previous sort of symptoms of exacerbations right. of of lesions that you've that you've already you've already got. So it's not right. progression, but in the moment you don't realise that. So it can yeah. be quite you know 
you can feel yeah. quite panicked. It's getting worse now. I am progressing. I'm moving, moving to yeah. the next stage. Well, I suppose going back to the fact that I've never, I've never not had what I've got. So yeah. it's hard to yeah. be like, oh, that's come back. But I, I would say things like stress, temperature, I am affected by the heat. If I get, to, I mean, one of the original tests they did for MS was the making you have a hot bath. And it was actually in having a hot bath that I realized I went really wobbly, was losing my balance. My vision went blurry, but then it would calm down once I cooled down. But I find yeah. temperature and stress to, to um, cause my symptoms to, to, yeah, exacerbate them. Yeah, certainly my hand becomes more tingly. My legs become more painful and weak and, mm. you know, all the things I have just tend to just remind me of, remind me that they're there. Um, but because there's been no, what I assume the term relapse should mean, uh, sorry, remittance yeah. should mean, uh, there's been none of that. So, um, but I suppose I am still affected by a pseudo relapse because it is just the same lesion worsening temporarily due to my environment perhaps or, or diet. Yeah. 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 yeah it feels, I don't know what the, the difference would be because yeah if it's if it's just the sim- same symptoms because that's with yeah. relapsing remitting is confusing isn't it because yeah. you can get you know it can put completely resolve or yeah. can partially resolve and it sounds yeah. from your symptoms that it hasn't really your yeah no. your your problems um, haven't resolved jay jay mentioned on the on the episode that you mentioned earlier um off the top of my head i can't remember i'll have to, I'll have to drop a clip in one now but it's um I think is um, um, if it's long if you have a symptom and it's longer than a month it's it's permanent nerve damage. Yeah, I heard her say that. Yeah, yeah which I, again yeah. I, it was a term or, or um, an understanding that I didn't I hadn't been aware of previously. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it just feels like we all need to become neurologists just to understand our own bodies at this at this stage because we don't seem to get the regular information to, I guess, monitor our own health in that respect because there's, you know. Relapse and remitting, progressive, but then there's secondary progressive. There's also relapsing progressive, which is a new term that I hadn't come across until relatively recently. And I don't really know what the difference between a lot of them is. But yeah. Here we are. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it, and that can yeah. be worrying and cause stress and, and away we go. Yeah, I do. I had recently gone through and read all of the, mm-hmm. the criteria again, and there was a useful graph. I think it was maybe the MS Society, and right. it showed different colours on the graph or different, whether you could be active um progressive or yes it was confusing yeah. it was confusing just yeah. looking at the graph to actually work <laughs> it all out um yeah, yeah and, and what the body is i just find it so fascinating what the body does to to rewire itself you know that mm. because i luckily anything that i've lost has always come back like yeah. right this very moment on the mm-hmm. 1st of december yeah. i um i feel just as healthy as i did seven years ago Fantastic. but that's not to say that on the way i haven't lost things and they have and they've come back yeah but Today, luckily, I have the functions that I had seven years ago. So That's whatever nice. it is that my, you know, my nervous system has found re, you know, paths, different paths yeah. it is, it's, it's using. Um, yeah. But then I, it's weird that I then get the symptoms when I'm, you know, run down or stressed or have a temperature yeah. and things like that. So they're there somewhere, but yeah. your body's found a way to work around them and it's yeah. like, I mean, like a, they're the angry person at the party ways. and they're like let's just tiptoe around them because then, then they'll <laughs> yeah. be quiet oh no they start kicking off yeah yeah oh, yeah exactly then they come back <laughs> yeah. yeah remember me yeah well um uh carol who was on the first episode she was talking about the way that that your nerves can do that because she sort of said that if i think she, she'd use this sort of uh, this demonstration which actually made a lot of sense to me she's like if your nerves become damaged and they break they can never repair so they just break but actually your body can build new neuro pathways around it sort of mm. almost like a like a detour um, yeah yeah how that works in terms of uh, you know improving your brain or working with relapses and and um uh, lesions I, i'm not sure but yeah it's, it, i'm certainly it's, it's piquing my curiosity and I, i'm gonna have to do a bit more research on this and um and look into it and uh, yeah and let you all know because that um it just yeah ironically blows my mind <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i know i yeah. want a thousand lives i want you know life doing what i'm doing but another life studying yeah, yeah neuroscience and things yeah it, it certainly is fascinating the brain of course is is a, a fascinating um fascinating thing and uh yeah it's crazy how it's been how it can work with with what you've got um so going back to your your diagnosis then so that you'd, mm. you'd, you'd been at your your to visit your third mri machine on to stamp on your bingo card 
Um, and that's when they could confirm the diagnosis. So then they, you know, you sat down with them and they, did they bring up your, your scans on screen and sort of show you the activity? What was that like? Um, they did it on that very, that very first one. They, I think they showed me the scans. Gosh, at the second one, I don't really know. Um, when I was told this is probably going to be a mess. I think so, because they described right. sort of like how they were like finger, like little fingers, like the right. lesions looked like little fingers on my, on my scan. Um, <laughs> So no, I don't think we talked much then. I think, to be honest, I do have, um, if there was feedback forms about how neurologists could give news, then I probably would have yeah. quite a lot to write on the feedback forms. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we'd all be yeah, ready. Because yeah, because it, yeah, yeah, because I think that day was, it took a lot of like hope away from me. Like I could, right. not like, yes, I could deal with that sort of diagnosis. I mean, I can, but um I just think you you still got to inspire you got to inspire people and give them hope and mm -hmm. and I feel like that didn't really happen in that appointment. I was told that yeah. you have you have a moderate amount of lesions and it was very much said like you know in that kind of way. Um, Be careful. <laughs> and yeah, and I was given information about donating to the centre, which I feel like is a really good thing like yeah. fundraising for the center and everything that is definitely something you should be worked on whether i put the two together <laughs> yeah. probably not and yeah. I, and i was sort of sold about fundraising because it and he said um because you you know you probably are going to to need these services that we're we're offering and i just it was it was just quite a lot it yeah. was just quite a lot really um Can I, I would have liked to, to yeah, and, and yeah. let's let's maybe focus on the positive because I also think that there's so much connection between. I mean, there is such a connection between the mind and the nervous system and the immune mm -hmm. the immune system. Um, yeah, that I think a lot of it is about well, your mindset. Yeah, <laughs> um, <hey. laughs> yeah, yeah, the MS mindset. Um, yeah. But it is yeah. a lot of it is is about mindset, about how you tackle things, about how you take, tackle all sorts of horrible things in life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely yeah. want them to work a little bit on that. Yes, I understand doctors have very, very challenging jobs, particularly in today's circumstances and, and how the NHS yeah. is and things like that. Yeah. Um, and they are very matter of fact, like these are the tests, these are the results, this is what it means. Yeah, two plus two yeah. equals four. Whereas actually yeah. it's, you know, a little bit of uh, sympathy, empathy, uh, reassurance and, and yeah, like you said, a bit of motivation, positivity would go a long yeah. way. Um yeah. Yeah, particularly when it strikes you at an age where you you naturally associate it with you know it affects older people it makes them difficult to walk but yeah lots of old people have that problem i'm sure everything's fine yeah and actually no it's this is something that's affecting you um yeah a lot, a lot sooner than um than you would imagine so yeah i completely agree and i don't know how we feed that back but maybe we should <laughs> we'll find a way yeah. we'll find a way um so when you got the news then had, had you sort of taken some time off while you were going through these results were you still working for the university at the time um, I only had two weeks off. I think I got signed off initially, you know, they give you the two weeks. Yes. I went back to work too quickly. Um, and that was my fault. That wasn't the yeah. fault of my of anyone I worked with. If anything, they were saying, I don't think yeah. we should be here. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, I had the so guilt. As nicely as possible. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, don't think, I don't think it's ready. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I went back. And I think maybe within days I had new symptoms that I hadn't had for the previous like three weeks um so yeah that was then just yeah so then I did I did a bit of a phased a phased return they were really supportive yeah. of doing you know a phased return and getting me back um yeah. yeah and then no so going through the rest of the next appointments and things no I was, I was back at work and things right. still had some some symptoms that were lingering you know yeah. I think I'd like my other leg was numb at that point and um, yeah, it was just sort of switching limbs really about which, yeah, what was happening. Yeah. So at that point you were, yeah, observing some things that were happening and worrying, waiting for your next, uh, next session of poking or prodding or being in a, a big metal box and yeah. yeah not, and what the next great. steps were, we hadn't even talked about medication at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah you started very... to sort of research it a bit more, obviously as, as it, as and when it was mentioned, you think, right, I'm going to have to look into this now. And did you do the old, the old Google diagnosis and. Yeah. 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 I think I was quite good at not, um, it was, I think I was more looking at like the, the outcomes with people with MS and like how their lives can be rather yeah. than treatment. I don't think I went down the treatment sort of Google doctor, um, path too far just because it was so confusing. And I just really felt like I'll deal with this as and when it comes up with my neurologist. Yeah. Um, 
and eventually we got to the chat about medication and yeah. and what was available to me yeah okay well and so how long then from um from you've had your diagnosis you're at work obviously it's not something that you're doing anymore you've uh, sort of embraced a new a new venture which is is great to see and, and yeah, yeah. I, I had a a lovely peruse through your your instagram page and there's some great advice on there and great um yeah great great posts about about what we can do to look after not just ms but other critical illnesses and things because as as we've touched on there i we're both firm believers really there that stress can not only maybe cause or perhaps trigger underlying symptoms it can worsen symptoms and it can bring on new symptoms but also the influence that that diet has because yeah stress and diet if you're worrying about something and you harbor it and push it down and i'll worry about that later that attacks your immune system and and then i'm eating loads of rubbish and your guts in a terrible way that's going to make things worse so yeah i suppose that, that kind of led you then to um to, to something that's that's able to help a lot more people so how, how did that come about yeah um well sorry just for context the, you obviously you, you've now yeah moved on to a completely new venture of looking at nutrition and and uh and how that can yeah. help us help us all so yeah how did that how did that yeah. come about yeah that's all right I'm a, a registered nutritional therapist nutritionist yeah. some people use the, the terms interchangeably yeah. um and I got into that because it was after actually that first um chat with a Bristol neurologist that it was okay this is this is what it's going to be so I that was when I was like right if I get a problem in life, very, you know, very few times do I just say, oh, you know, you know, I've got this problem. We'll just see how it goes. I'm yeah. very much a, OK, right, we might have a bit of a cry about it. But then how can I solve this? What can we yeah. do? What, how can we make this better? Like this can't be just this problem and just wait to see what happens. Yeah. Um, so straight away, I started looking at the different diets and the confusing world of that is nutrition um, mm. and diseases and what was out there. And I got some books and I devoured them. That became like, it, you know my new hobby really sort of just learning about what I could do for myself yeah. um and then it, I just found it so fascinating and I'd always found it fascinating I think that's why it was such an instinctive festival just like start looking at nutrition um yeah. because you know that would be often what I would look up um with that you know previous ailments and things yeah um, what can I do I'm not gonna sit yeah. to this to get worse and see what yeah. happens yeah it's it's yeah. you want to be more proactive to to help yourself so yeah, yeah exactly and you are, you know, it's really sort of a cliched thing to say, but like you are what you eat. Yeah. And But you are what you yeah. eat. Like your body doesn't just, you know, make things from nothing. Like you yeah. have to put your fuel in and then you're, you you know, that's what your body is made up of. Mm. So, yeah, I got really into that. Um, and I actually, I probably made a mistake at the beginning because I was quite overwhelmed with like what I should and shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, although I've now reframed it very much in my head as I choose to do this. I choose okay. not to do that. I like that. Um, yeah. Rather than you you can eat that, you can't eat that. So no, I'm I'm choosing yeah. myself. I'm choosing my health. Yeah. Um, and so I cut a lot of things out without maybe replacing them with other things. Okay. So I think that's now what I try and help people with. It's mm -hmm. it's it's almost flooding your diet with wonderful things and yeah. squeezing out the things that aren't going to serve you that aren't going to be beneficial to your health um yeah. and that's what I didn't do so right. yeah don't make the same mistake that I did um yeah. but very quickly I, I did I started to adapt and find new ways of of eating um yeah. and my family were hugely supportive got really involved um yeah. and I met my partner at the same some very similar time um okay. having got a diagnosis of MS thinking oh great if it wasn't hard enough to meet people <laughs> already <laughs> yeah yeah uh, an awkward throw this you in know, the mix. Yeah. yeah that third yeah. date that second nice, date. nice to meet you any any kids or critical illnesses that we need to <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, when exactly. bring that up yeah. exactly oh. but um yeah we met and a huge amount of support i got from from him and it was fantastic yeah. and a uh, brilliant cook and oh. yeah got totally Ideal. involved in yeah. um in, in all these new things that i was yeah that i was cooking yeah. up in the kitchen so that yeah almost, that almost like a new a new challenge or, or hobby for him then it's like oh give me these recipes let me let me tackle them but see what i can do with them or yeah oh, yeah i'm not setup, overwhelmed it? by it Brilliant. not overwhelmed by it at all yeah we've got some great yeah. new cookbooks and things um yeah. and i got more and more involved and i wanted to to learn more about um yeah ms i really wanted to learn more about that but also yeah. then i started seeing as we should all see ourselves as just because we got dealt one rubbish hand in life yeah. and we've got ms it doesn't yeah. mean Unfortunately, we're not going to get dealt another rubbish hand. And the yeah. more I started to learn and read and things, I thought, okay, 
yes, it's not as bad as the other things that it could have been, but I've had a taste now of something that's, you know, a, a new disease. So I thought, I, you know, I'm not really keen on it. Nah. Yeah. I kind of want to limit the, the, you know, the risk factors and stuff in my life. So yeah, I just yeah. started learning about all other sorts of walks, you know, different, um, different ways of living. And that took me to, to consider retraining. Um, since I was doing it anywhere in my free time, I thought, well, yeah, I want to delve deeper and get qualified. So yeah, I started studying to be a nutritional therapist. Good on you. And, and what an achievement to, to go through that sort of qualification and, and learning a whole new area of expertise expertise whilst living with a critical illness and, and trying to deal yeah. and manage manage that and studying anything is stressful <laughs> so you're thinking right rule one don't get stressed <laughs> yeah. yeah oh here we go here oh we my go. god yeah. yeah the conversations yeah. we had with my classmates about about that we would be sitting in a, in a lecture about stress meanwhile yeah. you know people juggling families and full-time jobs and going yeah. to college at weekends and thinking yeah we're not looking after ourselves here, but no. <laughs> I'm through it now. I'm on the other yeah, side. We need, we need to practice what we preach. Yeah. Is, yeah. is there an element of um, of trial and error then at the start where you were sort of, yeah, you've got all the books, there was things you liked about one, didn't like about something else, something that worked for you that said it should work for everyone or this, like yeah. what it did or how did, how did yeah. that kind of, that journey take you? Or where yeah. Did that journey take you? Um, I think I'm sort of a mixture of, I, I'm all about evidence-based. I, I really like to see what studies have been done and the quality of studies, um, if those uh, findings have been replicated. Um, because I think there's just so much out there, so much misinformation out there. It's really tricky, especially with mm -hmm. social media. Everyone's an expert um, on things. Yep. And even experts don't agree with each other. So I think, you know, having studies like that are, are really important. But also yep. it is understanding the individual. So just because, yep. you know, you might have a study saying this doesn't, happen for you know there's no significant differences in this cohort it doesn't necessarily mean that your body's exactly the same way so i think it is a bit of a mixture of getting the best evidence out there um yeah. and then also seeing what is happening with you like our gut health may be completely different i might yeah. react to some foods that you don't react to or or vice versa but i think the the sort of the the main rules i sort of lived by and still do um there's some really interesting um research about saturated fats and that's yep. you know, research from the last 50 years about saturated fats um and the way that the, the saturated fats the structure of of um of our nerves and things and and how flexible those nerves are and the oxidation and things of of those fats so yeah i follow a diet really low in saturated fats um yep. but not low in fat like fat's really yeah healthy we need fat. we need, yep. we need fat um Good fats yeah Good fats, exactly. So lots of like nuts and oil, uh, olive oil and um, yeah. and oily fish. So omega threes. So I was really looking at my diet, thinking I don't yes. really have much omega three in it. I didn't. I liked fish, and I certainly yeah. ate a lot more seafood when I was in Spain. But it wasn't. Um, I was living with a vegetarian at the time, and I just didn't really cook yeah. fish. And I just thought, okay, well, my diet is clearly higher in omega six than omega three. I yeah. need to sort that out for inflammation. Yeah. Um, I've been hearing lots more about omega-3 recently and um, yeah, I think more and more people are starting to sort of switch on to the importance of it and, and, and how it can affect things like MS or, or certainly create a better environment for yeah. us to live with, with MS. So Exactly. Yeah. With an inflammatory disease, you know, we're supposed to be, we want to lower the inflammation as much as, as possible. And today's diet, the, the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 is there's just such an imbalance and we need to really increase that omega-3 but it's, yeah. it is really hard and with a you know the western diet with all the processed oh, yeah. foods and um yeah yeah well, some, some great advice i got from um a nutritionist who, who I, I used to do some networking with um in fact i did a podcast with him a few years ago um he's a great guy not yeah i loved his um, he did a lot about gut health and things but he, one thing that always stuck with me he says that food doesn't come in packages products do and that yeah. for me, when you're doing your shopping is such a like easy lens to look through. You pick up the yeah. box and look on the back and you think, well, why am I looking on the back? I, this isn't a, like, no, get the fresh fish, get the fresh veg, try and eat as if we'd picked it ourselves, you know, and these are nice, you know, e even if you are going to a supermarket rather than uh, a butcher or a, a fishmonger or a, or a grocer or things like that. Um, yeah. Looking at, if, if you having to really study the back of the packaging, then perhaps it's not really got the things in that you need. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so 
Um, so once you, you got your qualification then, it, uh, did you finish the qualification as you were still working at the university? And, and, and what was the kind of, what were the next steps for you from there? Um, yeah, I, there, I gave up my job, um, my, my full-time like, job, um, well, just while I was finishing the right. studies. And now, yeah, so transitioning, I would love to be um, just full, completely full-time with as a nutritional therapist that's sort of like the end the end goal um yeah at the moment sort of doing that part-time um building up my my client base yeah um but trying to help people as well with with ms and yeah. there are other things going on in people's lives right so yeah. you you might have ms but there are different life stages like maybe um people are going through perimenopause and menopause yeah. and yeah. those symptoms can be quite similar you know you can struggle with 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 things like the, the changes to heat can um your hot flushes can can bring yes. on symptoms so you might want to work on on some of that yeah. um the, the aches the pains insomnia um depression anxiety some some symptoms overlap but yes. some some menopausal symptoms may actually make the ms worse yeah. um other diseases like unfortunately you know there are com- comorbidities with ms like we are more likely to have cardiovascular events yeah. so it's working with people as well on, on cardiovascular health and lowering ldl cholesterol so your bad cholesterol um working with clients with weight management yeah. um we- you know increased weight and obesity is linked to to worse ms health yeah. outcomes so it's yeah it's looking at people as a whole yeah. of yeah, you've got MS, but you might have other things going on as well. We need to focus yeah. on and maybe find some root causes of some of those issues. Maybe do some extra tests that aren't available on the NHS. Yeah. Yeah, I know th- um, more nutritionists are doing things like blood tests and getting it sent away to get sort of some more stats on how, because like you said, uh, our bodies can be very different. Our MS can be different. Our symptoms can be different. Our symptoms can be the same, but different, you know, not quite the exact same experience. And And I suppose... I, I always you know, try and think of an, an analogy just so I can understand it myself. But I suppose it's like you're, if you're taking a car to the garage and stuff, you want a good MOT. You want to make sure the engine's running properly before yeah. you start looking at the different exhausts or wheel. I mean, I can tell I'm not a very particularly car. <laughs> it's probably not the right analogy for me. I was, <laughs> That's I was convinced. Else. Yeah, well, thank you. Yes, I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, but it, it's not looking at, right, you've got MS, so just do this. It's right, what is your MS like? What is your body like? What are you more likely to to experience than, than perhaps someone else uh, who doesn't have MS or does, but male or female or, um, you know, uh, in the 20s or in the 30s, you know? factoring all that in and, and and i suppose yeah like i said it's it's um you're spending time with people to really kind of understand how these things impact them and their unique circumstances yeah, yeah. and we've got different lives i know you said you think you've got children right yes yeah yeah so you know you're probably quite time poor i would think you know with, yep. with kids you know that's juggling and you also if you're juggling different people's eating habits as well yeah. like some people may like some things might not like others yep. exhaustion fatigue i mean i've i've been there and you know the ms fatigue completely wipes you out and yep. you know you don't even know how you're going to get from a to b no. let alone make a meal for you know four people <laughs> So I think it's two, yeah, it's two very fussy children. Yeah. Two very fussy children. Yeah. Just yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I remember being a fussy child. So like <laughs> half of half of me is just you know eat it, but yeah. the other half of me is like oh, I remember, I remember how yeah. you know difficult yeah. to eat certain things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you might you know I help people with putting together practical ideas for for meal plans um, yeah. and and cooking techniques that are easier or batch cooking or even if you if you aren't able to make food from scratch because you know we do want to aim for the stars you want to get you want to aim at the top but yeah. if you can't it's like looking at the healthier ways of doing things if you're unable to you actually and... yeah you don't have an organic veg shop just at the end of your road and you yeah. come home and you make something from scratch like what are the next best steps because yeah. i think people often go for the easiest options don't they like yeah ready meals i suppose if you food if you are at that time experiencing fatigue or experiencing um, symptoms and you're tired, like you're really just struggling to do anything, the thought of cooking a meal, it makes just, it makes you even feel more exhausted at the thought. And, I, and again, I, I reference yeah. back to, um, to, to Carol, who was on the first episode, you know, she has quite a lot of cognitive uh, impairment with her symptoms um, and she's just not allowed to cook. Basically she just, just 
doesn't even have the, anything in the kitchen that she would use to to make a meal because she'll just forget that something's yeah. cooking and potentially yeah. cause a, a you know a hazard or, or in danger or, in danger of life so I suppose it's like right and her advice again was well what can I do how can I do this and she is yeah. very positive and proactive so yeah if you, addressing those sort of well if this is what you've got to work with how do we make this best for, for you yeah which Amazing. just googling what should I eat with MS or uh, you know buying a book saying this diet that's a really great place to start to start but it doesn't necessarily address like there's no chapter yeah. on you know yeah Liam this is what you should do this is what your yeah. life looks like this is what you should do for your kids you know yeah. there's no there's no chapter on that so yeah. that's why helping yeah working with someone to help you through that is um can be really beneficial definitely definitely um and, and if someone was was um was thinking about working with um with a nutritionist or a nutritional therapist and they wanted to learn more about what you do um of course i will uh, i'll drop your instagram um link will pop up throughout uh, throughout the episode and it'll be available in the in the video description as well but um do you have a website as well that people can reach you at yeah um it's uh jennacox.co.uk um really imaginative i thought you know go with your name straight to marketing straight to the brand. point you need it yeah, yeah exactly it. um yeah and um instagram Jenna Cox nutrition um yeah come and give me some some hellos or some hearts are on there yes. because I'm not you you're probably quite a lot more extroverted than me I'm just guessing because you've chosen to put yourself out there on, on YouTube um uh, I'm very good at putting a front on it I think it's, I, I come from a marketing background so I just know what I have um, to do and I've kind okay. of got good at making myself do it but um, yeah. I suppose it's the, it's the ADHD in me as well I think I just uh, I, I quite like being center of attention I think <laughs> like oh, jazz, well, jazz hands so yeah <laughs> good for you because I feel I feel that I mean there are plenty of people my age and older who are all over um yeah. instagram and social media so i can't blame it on my age or anything but i think yeah in being yeah an introvert it's um <laughs> yeah sometimes a bit like oh, yeah. i have to do something else on on there yeah. so yeah if you see me on, on on instagram or something give me a hello or something like yeah. that <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll share your uh, share your page and, and send you some some love um and it's always important to know when it comes to videoing yourself sometimes just videoing yourself and not posting it as a practice helps but just know that awkward ugh, feeling is just you not everybody no, else. Knows. Everyone else won't think, give two thoughts about, about how uncomfortable you might have felt. They just want to know what you've got to say and learn about you and your brand. So um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely uh, definitely share the love. Um, and as I have done on previous episodes, um, uh, you might have, have seen on, on Jason, that uh, a couple of questions I like to sort of uh, round off our, our chat with. And, and firstly, it would be, um, what advice would you give to yourself um, if you could go back at the point of diagnosis, knowing what you know now, what advice would, would you like to give um, 2016 Jenna was it yeah yeah um it's a good question um because I knew I'd heard you ask that question before I mentioned it was coming. the better answer <laughs> I knew it was coming but I didn't necessarily think Rats. about it yeah I think I would probably say um I think my dad was just really great at, my, my mom and my dad fantastic support yeah. but my dad I remember just saying whenever I kept saying um and then what because you know I said well, this is what's happened to me now. And then what happens if I have my, you know, if I have another relapse and I'm not here. And at the time I was, I was single. I didn't have, you know, I lived with my partner now. We've been together for seven years, but I was, I was alone. And he just kept saying, well, oh, we'll deal with it. But what if Great advice. I then something happens to my mobility or oh, we'll deal with it. And everything I said, it was just, we'll deal with it. And I just thought, okay, we'll deal with it. Yeah. And I think that was like a real, that was something I've tried to sort of take throughout of I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything that I can with my diet. I'm, I'm doing exercise. I'm trying to monitor my stress and everything like that. And whatever happens, I'll deal with it. Yeah. Because there's nothing else you can do. So um, I think I would just go back to when it first sort of all started kicking off and just to tell this 2016 Jenna, <laughs> you, you'll deal with it. You'll deal with it. Yeah. Listen to your you'll dad. You'll deal with it. Yeah. yeah. You just get up the next day and you'll deal with it. Love that. Oh, your dad sounds like uh, like someone everyone should should have around hovering in the life and just be like jumping in like, we'll deal with it. It's quite, yeah. sounds very reassuring. That's uh, yeah. great, to, yeah, great yeah, yeah. to have on your team. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and obviously then, you know, uh, the next question that's, um, that, that's, that's come in is, is what advice would you then give to the newly diagnosed um, who are perhaps just starting their, their journey and, and may have perhaps stumbled across the podcast and, and trying to learn more? Yeah. Um, I would say try and look for things that give you hope. 
because you don't know what your your journey is going to be. Um, don't compare yourself necessarily to other people. Um, I didn't. I actually shied away from from that at the beginning. And I'm glad I yeah. did because mm-hmm. um, I didn't really want to know how bad someone else had, you know, their journey had gone. And I also didn't really want to know someone who was like, oh, well, I'm absolutely fine. Yeah. Because either way, I was just like, well, good for yeah. you. You know, yeah. it was like, well, what's <laughs> right. my journey going to be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would say, yeah, your journey is your journey. Um, your symptoms, your symptoms. But, um, fight to be heard. And look for things that give you hope. So my way of doing that was was looking at all the things that were within my power. Um, And if those things are things like nutrition and exercise, then really get involved with all those things. Because then each day you can just feel like I'm winning. You know, I'm it's it's not I'm not going down without a fight. You know, it's 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 having that mindset of, okay, I'll deal with it, but I'm not going down without a fight. So bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. Jinx. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, it, it's beautifully encompassed, I guess, in that. It used to annoy me a little bit at first. And I don't know why, but now I'm really embracing that whole like MS warrior tag because I just I just used to see it a lot and I didn't really understand it. And I was a bit like, oh, what's, am I a warrior now? What is it? Like, I didn't feel like a warrior. I just thought it was a bit silly. Uh, but actually, the more you kind of, uh, yeah, embrace the future and, yeah, try to be optimistic, yeah. positive, proactive with um, what you can control give the fight yeah don't wait for yeah. for for what you think is inevitable because it, it might not be for you and yeah and take it on. i think that's great advice and um yeah and i think your dad sounds brilliant as well because he's i'm a mom i feel like my mom also needs a shout out <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't overshadow but yeah definitely two people that um that you want in your lifeboat as uh as yeah. my would say yeah that's it oh fantastic i, I really appreciate you, you jumping on and i think yeah nutrition is incredibly important so we'll make sure um everyone heads over to uh, to your social profiles and your website checks it out and can uh, yeah drop you some questions perhaps on some of your or some of your posts and um you know, make sure we give you a share because I think it's it's really important what you're doing and I love that your journey has taken you there and is helping other people. So great. Been, well thanks for having me on. Yeah, I look forward to hearing other stories that um that you your people have on. So that was great. Thank you. Oh thank you. Very, very welcome. And and I'm sure in the future as well we'll um, we'll get you back on uh, to talk about what how things have, have, have gotten on with um with the nutritional therapy and what, what you're doing now or next or anything you've got going on. We'll, yeah. we will um we will bring people back on and we do have some ideas as well to perhaps do some some group sessions as well like with a group session oh, sounds very much like okay i'm liam I have MS. but no like yeah. get us all together and just you know yeah we've got ms but let's have a chat and let's talk about it what's going well what's not and go from there so um brilliant yeah great to have you on and uh yeah we'll make sure you check out um jenna cox on instagram and her website and subscribe to the ms mindset and uh, the youtube page if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video